Neymar Chains Football is something that you've probably heard me say for quite some time. But the way I'm talking about Chains today, it also applies to Coutinho and Rivaldo and Roberto Carlos. This time around, we're not talking about how Neymar went to PSG and broke the transfer market. Instead, we're talking about Neymar to Barcelona and the search for the next great Brazilian. But before we do that, I want to formally invite you to the merch store and show you some more of the goodies. This here is our Frances inspired Ola Coule shirt and of course the sweatshirt with the new logo. And if you don't want a tire, there's also stickers, mugs, you name it. And a big, big thank you to those who've already got some stuff. Remember to tag the Barcelona podcast on social media so I can show everybody else how stylish you are in your new digs. All right, back to Brazil. We all know that the cost of a Brazilian or English player can be inflated at times, but unlike the average English player who rarely leaves the island, getting to Europe is the path for a Brazilian player looking to become the next big star in the game. Long gone are the Brazilians who spent the bulk of their careers in their homeland. Long gone are the days of Pele, of Santos, or Socrates, of Corinthians, who spent just one year at Fiorentina. Because when Sandra Rosell secured the services of Neymar to Barcelona, albeit under shadowy methods, he also secured the services of the next great marketing star in the game. Yes, Neymar's career hasn't entirely worked out the way we all thought it might then, but Barca signing Neymar instead of Real Madrid meant that Barca had signed the next great Brazilian to follow in the footsteps of Brazilian Ronaldo, Rivaldo, Romario, Roberto Carlos, Danny Alves, and Kaká. The same year that Barcelona secured the services of Neymar, Real Madrid signed a raw Casemiro from Sao Paulo. Obviously not in any way the same players. It would be a few years, but Vinicius Jr.'s 40 million euro transfer from Flamengo showed intent that Florentino Perez still believed in that Brazilian market. That was followed up the next year with a 40 million euro move for Rodrigo of Santos and Eder Militao of Sao Paulo by way of Porto. The next January, it was Renier from Flamengo for 27 million euros. All three attackers were 18 when they signed, so basically the first possible moment Los Blancos could sign them. I want to thank OneFootball for sponsoring this video. OneFootball is the app I use to keep myself up to date on all things FC Barcelona, everything I need to know, as well as check on every other team that Alemani could be scouting right now for a big summer transfer window. With a custom tailored homepage, stay up to date with breaking news, live scores, and even transfer news. While on the go, you can check with matches in live time and watch videos afterwards. Use the link in the description for a free download of One Football on Android or iOS to put all of your football in one place. And you'll help out a tiny Barca channel too. Thanks to One Football again for sponsoring this video. Now back to the Barca business. Now it appears that the race for the next great Brazilian lies at Palmeiras with Endrick. But we'll get to that teenage prodigy in a minute here because first, it's Barca's turn. I am rather dubious about the idea that you have to have a Brazilian in your squad to have any commercial success in that market because certainly Neymar sold a lot more jerseys and tickets than Coutinho did. But Bartomeu, as we remember, still really, 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 really wanted Coutinho. Yeah, maybe he wanted that commission that comes with that transfer. The less we do on that, the better. And maybe he thought Coutinho really was that good and worth the price. But I also think there is something about having an attacking and magical Brazilian star in your 11 that these club presidents just can't get past. While it didn't work out for Coutinho, I still think there's something to that arms race between Barca and Madrid to have the next great Brazilian. While Madrid currently have Vinny Jr. and Rodrigo, and are pretty set in that category, especially with the move for Mbappe, it seems like it's Barca's turn to grab the next great one. And based on the rumors of the last few months, it's not a matter of if, but who and when. The first answer to this question doesn't really fit the story that I've been painting for you. Rafinha of Leeds United doesn't really fit the bill that we're describing here. He moved from local Brazilian side FAFC, oh I know I'm pronouncing that wrong, to Camaras B team in 2016. After a move to Sporting CP in 2018, a move to Rennes in France in 2019, and a move to Leeds in 2020, where the then 23 year old really took his career to the next level. It's not the regular big money move for a teenager from one of the Brazilian powerhouses. Instead, for Barcelona, it's all about that release clause and the need. Rafinha wouldn't be coming as a raw project. He'd likely be arriving to replace Dembélé. He's got 10 goals and 3 assists in 35 appearances this season. And while his run of form has been rough lately, he still could be something for Brazil at the World Cup. He has 3 goals and 7 appearances for them. For the purpose of this video though, signing with Barca will elevate his profile. But he still may not have the same marketability of Neymar, Vinny Jr., Rodrigo, and even Anthony from Ajax or Gabriel Martinelli of Arsenal. If things do work out, he probably gets similar name cachet of Gabriel Jesus, also a 25-year-old, but the kind of 25-year-old that made a move from Palmeiras to Man City as an unproven youngster for a big fee. Man City, meanwhile, brought in teenage winger Kaiki from Fluminense, a reminder that this is not a two-horse race. 
And it is a bit interesting at this point that we've only talked about the big money moves that have had success. Because Barca have also gone for a lot of smaller moves over the last few seasons that certainly didn't have much success at all. Those names including Douglas, Mateus Fernandez, Gustavo Mai, and Vitinho. Yeah, remember those? Not all of those were even for the first team. Many of those were just 1 to 3 million euro purchases for the B team in the hopes that they were the next great Brazilian star on a discount. But if Barca are really in the market for the next big great Brazilian star, there are three names that just keep jumping out for two different reasons. We start with two players at Santos. It's Angelo, the winger, and it's the center back Kaiki. In the case of the center back Kaiki, who is already 18 and a regular starter for Santos, he'd be a move for the near future. But due to his price being around 30 million euros, I'm not sure that his timeline matches up with Barca's who doesn't have the funds and already has two U23 center backs for the future in Araujo and Garcia. Angelo is the one that has been more heavily linked with the Catalans, as a 17-year-old right winger could be more of the next big thing. He's already played 67 matches for the first team, scoring two goals with three assists. Before you scoff at those numbers, just watch him. He's pretty electric, but may not fit the timeline for Barca either. Apparently, he would also cost around 30 million euros plus, which is a pretty big risk for Barca to use their money on. He would arrive when he turns 18 in December. But if Barca really think that highly of him, they can return in January if there are more funds available. The other major reason these two have been linked with Barca is that due to Santos ignoring a purchase option for Gabigol way back in 2013, selling him straight to Inter Milan, Barca has a preferential option on both teenagers. That option doesn't mean a discount though. So just like Santos did way back in the Neymar days, they can just say what the price is and say, Barca, if you want these players, you've got to pay that number or we'll find someone else. Now I know we've been talking timeline, so here's one that's actually so young that he might wind up, you know, on the other side of it fitting Barca's timeline. Endrick of Palmeiras, who's been extensively covered by the Spanish newspapers, is clearly wanted by both Barcelona and Real Madrid. What's crazier about him though is he's not able to come to Europe until July of 2024 when he finally turns 18. The 15 year old is already training with the first team at Palmeiras and it's only a matter of time before he makes his first team debut. And he's already put himself on the map earlier this year by winning the Copinha Trophy for his club against opponents a few years older. He scored six goals and seven games in the U20 tournament and then dominated the competition more recently at the youth tournament in France, the Mondial Football Montaigu, with players closer to his age. It seems like the amount is at minimum 45 million, a fee that no club could even pay until he signs his first professional contract with Palmeiras when he turns 16 this summer. And just wait till you see the release clause that'll have to be negotiated down that Palmeiras is going to put in that professional contract, especially if he can continue on this path for the next few seasons. And therein lies the problem, right? The euro amount, of course. But for Barca, it's a gamble. Secure his signing, he becomes the next big star on the field, and there is commercial success in Brazil, and the sky is the limit. As a number nine now and a future number nine, he solves so many problems for you for quite a few years, on the field and off it. But where the club is now, get that gamble wrong, an injury, a lack of development, the follies of hyping up a teenager before they're ready, and Barca could take another two steps back. That's what makes Endrick so interesting. Unlike other Brazilian talents that these top teams are taking chances on, there is a general consensus around all the major clubs that this kid is special. Very, very special. But just how special and at what risk? And that's always the question with Brazilians, isn't it? You bring them halfway around the world in a culture that they're not used to, with a language that they may not know, and you hope that they can make good on the major investment that the club put in them. It's a lot to ask of a teenager, and that's why so many falter. But as Barca's history will tell you, there's a reason why they keep going back to South America. From Rivaldo, Romario, Danny Alves, and Neymar, Barcelona is better with a Brazilian. And this channel is usually better with a like and subscribe, so support the channel so you don't miss anything that I have coming out over the summer as I give myself a little bit of a rest for the match reviews. And as always, until next time, Forza Barca.